Given what's said in the gospel today as we wrap up our treatment of the Sermon on the Plain, the Lord Jesus, there was a priest, uh, you know, we hear about beams in the eyes and splinters in the other eyes, and there was a priest, <clears throat> and uh, he shares a story about a woman in his parish. She came up to him and said, you know, Father, I think I have a ministry of complaint. I believe I have a talent here of complaint. The priest said to her, now, do you remember the story of the talents? Yes, yes. Well, what happened with the man with one talent? And she said, well, he buried that talent in the earth. And he said, go and do likewise. We hear about the trees and the fruit. And sorry if you were here at the uh, first confessions this week. I used fruit as uh, because we were talking about the good fruit and the, the vine and the branches. But the fruit again appears in the gospel, and you know it's that time of year for our citrus trees. And <clears throat> we have, you know a good tree bearing good fruit and, and the other tree. And the, it's just not doing so well. And the Lord asks us, the Lord asks us to bear good fruit. And how do we do that? How do we do that? And we can think about this. You know, as we move into Lent, maybe we take a, an examine and we say, you know, am I producing good fruit or something <laughs> much, much less? You could think about that woman with the bearing the talent and so forth. What is the demarcation of the person who's represented by the good tree producing the good fruit? And I, I thought about this. You know, it seems to me that the, the ones that I know that produce good fruit I just saw the bishop the other day. Ah, what, a, what a holy man, what a good man. I preached a homily on him recently. The holy hour. Spending a time with the Lord for one hour in his presence. Reading scripture. As we move into Lent, do we read scripture on a regular basis? Even just a little paragraph a day can make such a difference in your life. Believing what the church and the Bible teach. A lot of folks, uh, church, all these, all these rules, all these regulations, it's too much. And then I, I read recently this, this man who was, had a little too much to drink, and this priest overheard him say, well, I would believe in God if he would just leave me alone. Right? Because again, God wants us to do His will, not our will. Caring for others, selfishly, selfish, selflessly giving to others, pulling back on that judgment that we hear about in last week and we hear about in the gospel about the plank and the splinter or the beam and the splinter in the eye, praying the rosary. Doing ministry, taking time out of one's life to serve others. And that does, doesn't necessarily need to be just here in the church. I mean, when you hang out with others who are producing good fruit, it just happens. I was with a guy, we're driving down the highway and we're getting off an off-ramp. Off <clears throat> and he sees this homeless guy on the off-ramp and he's like, Hang on. And he's trying to get his wallet. And they're like, please don't wreck the truck. And he stops as quickly as he can. Here, take this. And then he's back on the road. Somebody's got a flat tire. Maybe we know how to change a flat tire. Maybe we have a, a jack in the vehicle that's better than what they have. Or they don't have one at all. I mean, I, two parishioners, right? I, I'm coming back from a trip uh, in early December 
And believe it or not, the Jeep conked out right there at the intersection of Guadalupe and the 101, right as I got to the top of the off-ramp. It just quit. And when the light turned green, people were not happy with me. <laughs> Two parishioners were right there. Father, we, we're here to help you. I'm like, I don't know what you can do, but they, they, the one, the husband stayed with me until the tow truck come. It took two hours for the tow truck to come. And another story like that, right? Again, just being a follower of Christ. So I'm, I'm in the driveway getting ready to go to the father-son camp out, and I'm loading the really big Traeger into my Jeep, and now I've got it all figured out. I don't need anybody's help. I got a ramp. I got a portable winch. I'm pulling it into the back of the, tr the, the Jeep truck, and it gets cocked sideways, and then it flips off. Wood pellets go everywhere. There's, there's, oh. and two parishioners were right there. Father, let's, let's help you get that loaded on the truck. Again, pushing back on that rotten fruit of mine, self-centeredness and thinking I have to do everything on my own. The rotten fruit thinking only of myself, what do I get out of this, what's in it for me, all these kinds of things. Judging others, and we all struggle with judgments, but it's different when we, we judge actions versus people and we judge people at their core. Priest tells another story about a, he, I believe someone writ, wrote into a columnist in the newspaper, <clears throat> and she was a cashier at a grocery store. She's like, oh, I just have to tell you how much I can't stand these people that come in paying with food stamps and buying these extravagant things. Like, for example, this woman came in and she bought a really nice birthday cake. And another woman came in and she bought this big bag of shrimp. These are luxuries. These are not essentials. And folks read the column and they wrote in. <clears throat> One lady says, look, my husband had worked for this plant for 15 years and the plant closed. And it was our anniversary and I wanted to make him a nice dinner so he would feel better. And then another woman wrote in and said, I bought a birthday cake for my daughter. She was very young. It would be her last birthday because she has terminal cancer and wouldn't last more than six months. See, we don't know what's at the core. We don't know what's at the core. So we need to pull back on those things. Friend as, friends, as we <clears throat> move into Lent, let's, let's think about these two pieces of fruit. And what the Lord is asking of us. And maybe we're over here a little more than we're over there. If we can ask the Lord, what do I need to do? Pray the rosary, pray the chaplet of divine mercy, read scripture, go to church, maybe go to daily mass. All these kinds of things we can ask the Lord to help us to, for him to pull that sliver out of our eyes so that we can see like he sees.